Old money is the inherited wealth of established upper class families, i.e., gentry, patriciate, or a person, family, or lineage possessing inherited wealth. The term typically describes a class of the rich who have been able to maintain their wealth over multiple generations, often referring to perceived members of the de facto aristocracy in societies that historically lack an officially established aristocratic class such as the U.S. <laughs> United States Wealth—assets held by an individual or by a household provides an important dimension of social stratification because it can pass from generation to generation, ensuring that a family's offspring will remain financially stable. Families with old money use accumulated assets or savings to bridge interruptions in income, thus guarding against downward social mobility. Old money was typically associated with white Anglo-Saxon Protestant wasp status. Old money applies to those of the upper class whose wealth separates them from lower social classes. According to anthropologist W. Lloyd Warner, the upper class in the United States during the 1930s was divided into the upper upper and the lower upper classes. The lower upper were those that did not come from traditionally wealthy families. They earned their money from investments and business like John D. Rockefeller, whose father was a traveling peddler, rather than inheritance. In contrast to the nouveau riche, the upper upper class were families viewed as quasi-aristocratic and high society. These families had been rich and prominent in American politics for generations in many cases since before the Revolution when their ancestors had accumulated fortunes as members of the elite planter class, or as merchants, slave traders, ship owners, or fur traders. In many cases, especially in Virginia, Maryland, and the Carolinas the source of these families' wealth were vast tracts of land granted to their ancestors by the Crown and or acquired by headright during the colonial period. These families sometimes known as American gentry produced several founding fathers of the United States and a number of early U.S. presidents including George Washington, who with an estimated net worth of $525 million in 2016 dollars due to his vast holdings of land and slaves, was the wealthiest man to hold the office prior to the election of billionaire Donald Trump in 2016. During the early 20th century, the upper upper class were seen as more prestigious than the nouveau riche. During the late 19th century and early 20th century, the nouveau rich flaunted their wealth by building gilded age mansions that emulated the palaces of European royalty, while old money was more conservative. American old money families tend to adhere to various mainline Protestant denominations. Episcopalians and Presbyterians are most prevalent. Some families with old money include. The Randolph family is descended from William Randolph, an American colonist, who accumulated a vast fortune including over 20,000 acres 81 square kilometers of land as a planter and merchant, and played an important role in the history and government of the English colony of Virginia. He arrived in Virginia sometime between 1669 and 1673, and married Mary Isham a few years later. Randolph's descendants have included many prominent Americans including U.S. President Thomas Jefferson, U.S. Chief Justice John Marshall, Confederate General, Robert E. Lee, Peyton Randolph, the first President of the Continental Congress, and Edmund Randolph who served as the seventh Governor of Virginia, the second U.S. Secretary of State, and the first U.S. Attorney General as well as many other notable individuals in Virginia and U.S. politics. The Harrison family came to the colony of Virginia in 1630 and became wealthy as tobacco planters, accumulating thousands of acres of land along the James River. The family was prominent in Virginia and U.S. politics for over two centuries. The family produced Benjamin Harrison v. A. Signer of the Declaration of Independence several governors of Virginia as well as two U.S. presidents, William Henry Harrison, and Benjamin Harrison and many other noteworthy individuals including J. Hartwell Harrison a member of the medical team that received the 1961 Amory Prize of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences for bringing kidney transplantation to the world. The Roosevelt family of Manhattan arrived from the Netherlands as colonists and later became prominent in politics, producing Presidents Theodore and Franklin Roosevelt. The Cabots arrived in Salem from the Isle of Jersey in 1700 and made fortunes in shipping. At the age of 21, Godfrey Lowell Cabot see Lowell's below founded the Cabot Corporation, the largest producer of carbon black in the country. The Lowell family are descended from Boston colonists. 
Francis Cabot Lowell began the fortune in shipping and later textiles. The family has produced several noteworthy individuals, including Abbot Lawrence Lowell, who presided over Harvard for 24 years. The DuPont family fortune began in 1803, but they became an extraordinarily wealthy family by selling gunpowder during the American Civil War. By World War I, the DuPont family produced virtually all American gunpowder. In 1968, Ferdinand Lundberg declared the DuPont fortune to be America's largest family fortune. As of 2008 E.I. DuPont de Namur & Company ranked 81st on the Fortune 500 list of the largest U.S. corporations. The Forbes family of Boston made their fortune in the shipping and later railroad industries as well as other investments. They have been a prominent wealthy family in the United States for 200 years. The Astor family made their fortune in the 18th century, through fur trading, real estate, the hotel industry and other investments. The Griswold family of Connecticut made their fortune in shipping, banking, railroads, and industry. They have been prominent in American politics, producing five governors and numerous senators and congressmen, although many old money individuals do not rank as high on the list of Forbes' 400 richest Americans as they once did, their wealth continues to grow. Many families increased their holdings by investment strategies such as the pooling of resources. For example, the Rockefeller family's estimated net worth of $1 billion in the 1930s grew to $8.5 billion by 2000. That is, not adjusted for inflation. In 60 years, four of the richest families in the United States increased their combined $2-4 billion in 1937 to $38 billion without holding large shares in emerging industries. When adjusted for inflation, the actual dollar wealth of many of these families has shrunk since the 30s. From a private wealth manager's perspective, old money can be classified into two, active old money and passive old money. The former includes inheritors who, despite the inherited wealth at their disposal or that which they can access in the future, choose to pursue their own career or set up their own businesses. Paris Hilton and Sir Stelios Ionu are examples of this category. On the other hand, passive, old money, are those who are the idle rich or those who are not wealth producers. Old money, contrasts with the nouveau riche and parvenus. These fall under the category, new money, those not from traditionally wealthy families. Economists assert that the largest transfer of wealth will be as the older generation leaves wealth to the baby boomers. Inheritance has been estimated to make up 6% of the U.S. GDP each year. The current generation is wealthier than any generation before. This increase in wealth and inheritance indicates a rise of old money in American families. Stephen Hazeler argues that America is becoming an inheritance culture in which much economic opportunity is from family inheritance and not personal achievement. <laughs> Europe The Rothschild family, as an example, established finance houses across Europe from the 18th century and was ennobled by the Habsburg Emperor and Queen Victoria. Throughout the 19th century, they controlled the largest fortune in the world, in today's terms many hundreds of billions. The family has, at least to some extent, maintained its wealth for over two centuries. The Rothschilds were not, however, considered old money by their British counterparts. In Britain, the term generally exclusively refers to the landed gentry, usually the aristocracy and nobility who traditionally live off the land inherited paternally. The British concept is analogous to good lineage and it is not uncommon to find someone with old money who is actually poor or insolvent. By 2001, however, those belonging to this category, the aristocratic landowners, are still part of the wealthiest list in the United Kingdom. For instance, the Duke of Westminster, by way of his Grosvenor estate, owns large swaths of properties in London that include 200 acres of Belgravia and 100 acres of Mayfair. There is also the case of Viscount Portman, who is the owner of 100 acres of land north of Oxford Street. In France, the 200 families controlled much of the nation's wealth after 1815. The 200 is based on the policy that of the 40,000 shareholders of the Bank of France, only 200 were allowed to attend the annual meeting and they cast all the votes. Out of a nation of 27 million people, only 80,000 to 90,000 were allowed to vote in 1820, and the richest one-fourth of them had two votes. 
Influences on popular culture The ITV television series Downton Abbey frequently contrasts the differences between old money and new money in Britain during the early 20th century. Notably between the newspaperman Sir Richard Carlyle and the heiress Lady Mary Crawley, the distinction being the aggression of the parvenu Sir Richard and the noblesse oblige of the Crawleys. Perhaps the greatest literary critique of the tension between old money and new money can be found in F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. The characters in possession of old money represented by the Tom Buchanan family Tom and Daisy, get away with literally murder, while those with new money, represented by Gatsby himself, are alternately embraced and scorned by other characters in the book. Fitzgerald vastly critiques people in possession of old money through his narrator Nick Carraway, they were careless people, Tom and Daisy they smashed up things and creatures and then retreated back into their money or their vast carelessness or whatever it was that kept them together, and let other people clean up the mess they had made. Topic. See also Topic. References Topic. Further reading Fisher, Nick, and Hans van Wies, eds. Aristocracy in Antiquity, Redefining Greek and Roman Elites ISD LLC, 2015. Janssens, Paul, and Bartolome Jun Casalilla, eds. European Aristocracies and Colonial Elites, Patrimonial Management Strategies and Economic Development, 15th–18th Centuries Routledge, 2017. McDonough, Gary Ray. Good Families of Barcelona, A Social History of Power in the Industrial Era Princeton Up, 2014. Pincon, Michel, and Monique Pincon Charlotte. Grand Fortunes. Dynasties and Forms of Wealth in France 1998 excerpt Porter, John. The Vertical Mosaic, An Analysis of Social Class and Power in Canada 1965. Rothacher, Albrecht. The Japanese Power Elite 2016. Scott, Kimberly. Women, Rank, and Marriage in the British Aristocracy, 1485-2000, An Open Elite, 2014. Stone, Lawrence. An Open Elite, England, 1540-1880 Topic United States Aldrich, Nelson W. 1996. Old Money, The Mythology of Wealth in America. New York, Allworth Press. ISBN 9781880559779. Allen, Irving Lewis. Wasp, From Sociological Concept to Epithet, Ethnicity 2.2 153-162. Baltzell, E. Digby. Philadelphia Gentlemen, The Making of a New Upper Class 1958. Beckert, Sven. The Moneyed Metropolis, New York City and the Consolidation of the American Bourgeoisie, 1850-1896 Brooks, David. Bobos in Paradise, The New Upper Class and How They Got There 2010 Davis, Donald F. The Price of Conspicuous Production, The Detroit Elite and the Automobile Industry, 1900-1933, Journal of Social History 16.1 21-46, Online Farnham, Richard. Prestige in the Ivy League, Democratization and Discrimination at Penn and Columbia, 1890-1970, in Paul W. Kingston and Lionel S. Lewis, eds. The High Status Track, Studies of Elite Schools and Stratification, 1990. Fowlkes, Nick. High Society, The History of America's Upper Class, Asseline, 2008. ISBN 275940288-6 Fraser, Steve and Gary Gersel, eds. Ruling America, A History of Wealth and Power in a Democracy, Harvard UP, 2005, ISBN 0-674-01747-1 Ghent, Jocelyn Maynard, and Frederick Koppel Jar. The Chicago Business Elite, 1830-1930. A Collective Biography, Business History Review 50.3 288-328, online hood. Clifton. In Pursuit of Privilege, A History of New York City's Upper Class and the Making of a Metropolis 2016. Covers 1760-1970. Ingham, John N. The Iron Barons, A Social Analysis of an American Urban Elite, 1874-1965 Jar, Frederick Koppel, ed. 
The Rich, the Well-Born, and the Powerful, Elites and Upper Classes in History 1973, Essays by Scholars Jahr, Frederick Koppel. The Urban Establishment, Upper Strata in Boston, New York, Chicago, Charleston, and Los Angeles 1982. Lundberg, Ferdinand, The Rich and the Super Rich, A Study in the Power of Money Today 1968 McConaughey, Bruce A. New York Opera Going, 1825-50, Creating an Elite Social Ritual, American Music 1988, 181-192, Online Ostrander, Susan A. 1986. Women of the Upper Class. Temple University Press. ISBN 978-0-87722-475-4. Phillips, Kevin P. Wealth and Democracy, A Political History of the American Rich, Broadway Books 2003, ISBN 0-7679-0534-2 Ronald, 1980 The Forging of an Aristocracy, Harvard and the Boston Upper Class, 1800-1870 Williams, Peter West. Religion, Art, and Money, Episcopalians and American Culture from the Civil War to the Great Depression 2016, especially in New York City. <laughs>